sit there all day. Hell yeah. All my sits back to take place. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I'm your host, Paul Italia. Got a special guest on tonight, the legend of arm wrestling, left-hand goat, Travis the Beast Bajan. What's up, brother? How we doing, young man? How we doing? I'm making YouTube videos like crazy these days. Yeah, I'm keeping you busy, bro. I'm keeping you busy. I'm going to keep that fire under you. <laughs> I, got so, uh, other, I got 15 other people ahead of you. That I've been I've been working with, okay. You just it's behind the scenes. Yeah, but the You're difference like, is, brother, is I'm the boss. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know we were. Around. I didn't know. I didn't know we were live. I apologize about that. <laughs> so uh, this Saturday we got a big uh, event coming up, big pay per view event. It's going down in Percival, uh, Virginia. We got uh, opening match. We got Travis Bajan going against Brandon Alcesor. Best of three, left hand. Then we have an amateur super match. We got Robert Kelly going against Damon Ransom. And then we got the main event that everybody's been waiting for. Lachlan Adair against Todd Zilla. All starts at 9 p.m. on Ryan Bowen's YouTube channel. So, uh, Travis, tell us, uh, what can we expect from you on uh, Saturday? Uh, first of all, uh, you can expect the tournament to be outstanding meaning we're going to have a hundred people. They're all going to arm wrestle in various classes to where we're probably going to have 235 entries. And we are going to run through that stuff in a quick two hours. So at fir the first and foremost, that's what I'm going to do is make sure that you understand that as an athlete, I value your time. And because I am attempting to profit financially, I am also providing what I believe is the best arm wrestling service that you can get. And you, you know, like the refereeing will be good. The venue will be excellent. And most importantly, the time in which that I keep you will be a low three and a half hours. So that's what you can expect. First of all, as an athlete, you can come there, check everything out, be a, um, you can, you can, compete without having to spend an entire 12 hours at the venue. And then after that, what I am hoping and planning is a amazing pay-per-view one hour show that has everybody working in queue, not a lot of downtime. And um, we're going to do a little something extra, have a little panel there so that we can keep going to live comments during the match and hopefully what it will add up to is that we can run a good pay-per-view show that is worthy of the five dollars great and uh just to go over one more time what time does the actual tournament start 7 p.m we'll start weighing people in at five we will cut that off between six and six thirty and uh by seven o'clock we will have all five tables rolling we will run um, extremely efficiently down to the final two. We will take a five, a small five minute break, and then we'll run those finals on two tables starting at 830. It will end at nine o'clock at the same time that we are introducing Travis Bajan and Brandon El Celsor to get you guys ready for the pay-per-view event. And early weigh-ins uh, Friday, where is that going to be located? It's at the Harvest Gap, same spot where the venue is, and I believe it's at 7 p.m. We got so guys coming from Florida, Artem and Brandon Morris, Chance Shaw, the guys from Florida, the guys from Texas are coming, Danny Gillian's loading up the private jet. Don't be surprised if we see some, uh, some Robbie Burnett's and some top roll lows that are along with Danny Gillian. Um, we're bringing in guys from California. Of course, the Australians are coming. All the guys from New York, Pennsylvania, they'll all be there. There will be some super stiff competition. Uh, Jesse Gilliland's got a group of guys along with Wayne Withers that'll be up. So it's going to be a tough out. 
for every weight class. Yeah, another thing is uh, for the big amateur match that we got going on, uh, Robert Kelly versus Damon Ransom. I heard that uh, their uh, corners are going to be pretty stacked. I heard uh, Chan Shaw is going to be cornering uh, Robert Kelly. And I heard uh, Damon Ransom is going to be having uh, Big Wayne Withers in his corner. So. I got you. I won't trust Big Wayne in a spelling bee, but when it comes to arm wrestling coaching, I'm all over it. Love it, love it. So another question I had for you, Travis, is um, who are we going to have uh, commentary since uh, you're going to be, you got your own match going on, and I just wanted to kind of figure out who will be uh, taking the care of the mic. The Angry Bird will be on the mic, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Wilmot will be in the house, and he will be in charge of the commentating. Um, I will, I'm going to try to announce the amateur match if I can convince the two amateurs that we can have a different referee but if not then we'll stay with the angry bird for all three matches all right and uh just so you know for the amateur match uh, I believe we're gonna have uh Scott Wynn on uh for the amateur uh referee which would make me the put me on the microphone which will be super aesthetically pleasing to the crowd very good. All right, so we got that all sorted out. Now, uh, moving on, let's uh, let's hit a couple other topics that I've been getting a lot of questions about. First so, of all, uh, I don't we... mean to stop you. I don't mean to stop you, but I think I need to apologize to Devin Laird before he. Well, hold before on, hold I on. Got on. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back to that. We'll bring that at the end this, of the show. You gotta hurry up for that, man, because I, I I'm just waiting on this guy to come through the window right now. <laughs> I've never seen him every all over his website. It's all me. And I just wonder if that was a year ago. My God. All right. So go ahead. All right. So um, we got coming up on uh, on uh, February 12th, uh, East versus West. We got Engin Terzé's great event going down. And uh, he's got a pretty cool match uh, set for that. Well, he's got a bunch of great matches, but uh, this hey. is one that uh, hit my attention. We got uh, Evan Borgon from uh, Canada. He's going to be going against Schoolboy, which, uh, you know, everybody's been waiting for Schoolboy to, to get out there and uh, go against some of the top guys and all. So uh, what do you think about that match? Listen, the Evan that I know, and I don't know him, but the one that I know from the Internet has absolutely no chance. However... When I see a match like this that I think that there's no chance, there has to be something going on with Evan that I don't know about. So what I'm thinking is, is that Evan has taken his arm wrestling career up three notches without exposing it to anyone. And luckily, or possibly, because of COVID and how strenuous the Canadian government is, this guy has improved greatly because the guy that lost in the bottom eight to Ryan Bowen, I don't think can handle schoolboy because schoolboy is a 280 pound beast that is continuing, I am sure, to get better. So it's like, I think that, you know, pre COVID schoolboy was here and Evan was here and schoolboy we know is climbing. So Evan has to be taking some serious jumps. So I do not know those guys very well. So I don't know, but we will see pretty quickly um, when we get there, if, that is a a bad matchup or that you know the secret sauce is running through all the high hookers at this point and evan too has increased his uh capacity uh greatly you're saying if uh evan didn't increase his uh pancake intake we're uh, not even gonna have a close match well, i don't even know listen i don't know evan I have no idea. But what we do know is that Devin Larratt has increased his pancake diet, right? Or 
whatever it is, he is the fucking, he has changed. So the only way that this match makes sense to me is that Evan, in fact, has changed as well. Yeah, I'm not sure how it actually came about, but I think I heard a couple of rumors. Um, you know, uh, they were looking for uh, another match to throw in East versus West. And, uh, you know, Evan kept uh, calling out Schoolboy, or I think he was talking shit on a couple of videos with Schoolboy. And I think Alex, Schoolboy's uh, brother, might have said something to, to Evan to shut him up. And I think this is how this all came about, this match, which I think it's a very One interesting thing match. Well. And it's the good thing about it is that Evan, even if he doesn't have the arm wrestling capabilities, he will liven up the crowd. Yeah, Evan's got the hype train, man. He's uh, <laughs> yeah. definitely uh, making a lot of noise on social media. He's a very animated character, which that's what I, uh, I like about this match is we got two extreme different personalities going at it. We got Schoolboy, very respectful, uh, very humble keeps himself doesn't seem like he likes the social media that much it's more of alex putting the spotlight on uh schoolboy so um and then when we got the other opposite we got evan who is just literally doing anything bad he could possibly do drinking uh <laughs> just you know just talking as much shit as possible making as much noise so you know it's definitely going to be great clash of personality let me tell you let me tell you something interesting how crazy does Evan act around Ingen? Is Ingen is Ingen telling Evan, hey my man, we need your energy. We need you to go crazy. It is completely okay to shotgun a beer before the match. Or does Evan have a level that Ingen will not understand? And that could, it, listen, Evan could die in Istanbul. That's, that's exactly what hands, I was thinking. At the hands of 18 Turkish guys who accidentally think that he has waged war on the Turkish government during his act. Because I will tell you this, I have been to Turkey. It is very scary. I'm just telling you, like, it ain't Disneyland at all. And I'm telling you right now, you can you can mess around with Ingen Terzi. But you better be careful about all the people around there. Because if someone feels disrespected, it is strange. And I've caught myself stuttering and backpedaling. <laughs> to make sure that I didn't just cause a freaking American genocide over this thing with the whole team. Um, so I, I, that is, I think that Evan will be in his best manners, especially with the company that will be around. And um, the fact that, you know, it, listen, this ain't Toronto. It ain't Buffalo. When you drive in Istanbul, you will know that you are in a different place. I can't wait to see that. That is going to be great. Will Evan be on best behavior? Tune in to that one. <laughs> right. I mean, because, I mean, listen, Evan has the two ways right here. If Evan wants to legitimately be an arm wrestler that does things like he's doing, he either has to have a great show or he has to have great talent. This is an interesting place that whether it's the show or the talent that will be most um, appreciated by the locals. Let me ask you, um, we got, uh, I think there's like some like 16 super matches going down on uh, February 12th. Um, which one out of those stands out the most to you? I think financially for me, the Cody match is important to me um, because the fact is, is, um, the kid. Do me a favor. Just remind me of uh, who is Cody pulling again? <laughs> You're a funny guy. Funny guy. I don't want to say his name wrong, but I think it's Miroslav. And completely wrong. Completely have... wrong. You put okay, that name? one up. What's you, his you name? You put that one up. I got you. Do you know his name? 
Um, I believe it is um, <laughs> Art, Art, Artem or Arthur. And I'll leave well, the last name to you, name. brother. His last name is Miroslav, I believe. But all I know is I went on a little Zoom call with this kid, and the dude's like a 23-year-old uh, brick shit house. He looks like he's a fucking stud defensive lineman, like a J.J. Watt-looking cat. So I am, I am anxious to see exactly how good he is because the United States needs for Cody to win pretty dominantly. And um, if that match doesn't turn out the way that we want it, it will just discredit the Cody Travis Bajan match in June. Um, have you so, seen him pull? I have not. Only the practice with Vitaly. And uh, according to him, Vitaly was in charge of that practice uh, in physically. Now, um, after that, I believe Cody's got a match set in March. And is that with uh, Ryan Espy, if I'm correct? That again. That scares me as well. The only good thing about that is that that makes Cody look like who I think he is. If he loses to the young Kazakhstan because of his age, it will make, it will make us look like we have no reason to even have a Canadian U S dilemma. Um, because the fact is, is Ryan Espy a bad dude. I mean, Ryan Espy another one. I mean, I'm, I'm praying that the arm wrestling gods will look at Ryan Espy's left-handed loss to the big guy. What's his name? Alex Kudetja. Alex. So that loss to Alex, I'm hoping that um, the arm wrestling world would look at the torn shoulder slash bicep tendon problem that Ryan um, had the day before during the match with Alex when his right arm got hurt. And the next day he tried to pull left and we're hoping that there was a lack of stability there that did not allow him because uh, see, that I, match, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, so they pulled on separate days. Yeah. Two days in a row or, or, or hours apart, not a hundred percent sure. I'm just imagining it was days apart. What did you, uh, what'd you think of that production? I think that was pretty amazing. The whole uh, way they shot the matches and they had the yeah. two athletes talking on the background. They had the referee there. Neil was giving his little, what'd you think of that? Yeah, they killed it. They killed it. They killed it. And I've had 15 meetings ever since then asking people if we could do some stuff like that. So it will be interesting for us to find out as a potential arm wrestling production company, if in fact we can create a audience that would appreciate that um, sigmatography as opposed to just the steel camera there. But the fact is you can't spend money on production in the United States currently, unless you stop people from hacking all the footage and getting it free. So well, that's kind of what we're, uh, that's kind of what we're working on with uh, Saturday, correct? That we're, uh, doing the super matches in a separate location. We are allocation. trying our very best to protect our investment, to find out if indeed it could be profitable enough to have a 16 match super match card in Las Vegas, because we are totally okay, because we understand that there are 20,000 pay-per-view uh, buys that are, you know, in 20,000 to, to the, the sports world is not much, but to the arm wrestling world, it is a absolute game changer when it comes to the amount of resources that we would have be privy to in order to run great events. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So uh, recently, recently we know that we just uh, seen the Jake Paul fight against uh, Tyrone Woodley and all. And um, they were all talking crap on Jake Paul, saying he got no pay-per-views. He only had 65,000 pay-per-views. So I think it was uh, Nano Cruz actually made a meme about it and was like, what if uh, arm wrestling saw half of that? Would that be considered a success? I was thinking in numbers. I was like, oh, hell yeah, we'll take that any day. Definitely. And, and here's the great thing. 
I mean, no one is going at the very top going to become rich. It is just going to allow us to make the arm wrestlers super happy. And then for us to throw a big ass party, a big ass party. So trust me, I know a lot of you think that if you purchase the pay-per-view that Travis is going to buy a Jaguar, but here's the deal. I already got a Jaguar. It's all good. All I want is to have fun on the weekends with about eight of our, the coolest dudes in the world. That's all. Hell yeah. I agree with that. Um, the other day, I just want to kind of backtrack because I want to keep on uh, Ryan Espy for right now. So um, you got to watch that match with uh, Alex Ryan and all. I want to hear your kind of thing that went did I lose you? Yeah, hold on. I'm coming. Where the hell is my Zoom at? Are you good? Yeah, right. we're all good again. All right, sorry about that. So, yeah, Every I wanted time to someone calls or to Ryan Ashby, Ryan Ashby, uh, Alex Cadet, your match for both right hand and left. I just want to hear what your whole, what you thought of it and all the results and how dominating Alex was. I mean, I thought it was just, you know, Ryan has to be right-handed. I can understand why a guy like Alex could handle him pretty easy. I am super surprised at how easily Alex handled him left-handed. And I'm hoping that it had something to do with the right-hand injury. Right. But I'm, I'm just – that's just me trying to sleep at night. Um, and then to see Alex crack Hermes the same way, right-handed, leads me to believe that Alex is the real deal and a potential big problem in the world of Armas. Yeah, I agree with that uh, because uh, we all know um, we were there at TAL3 in Idaho that time when uh, Corey West pulled uh, Dave Sh uh, Shafee and uh, he popped his bicep tendon. And then uh, he still went again, and I believe it was uh, was it Todd? No, not Todd Zill. It was Wayne Withers. Wayne Withers. Yeah, he pulled him uh, left hand, and uh, he beat him, even though his right hand, uh, or I think it was the opposite way, right? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it definitely uh, it would have an effect on it, but not that much that uh, Alex should have made that look that easy, in my opinion. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Alex is a huge problem. He's a problem. Now, um, so what about you and Ryan SB? Because I know you guys have a uh, past and all. And um, I remember talking to uh, Ryan, and uh, I think it was about like a year ago, he was asking me about, uh, about you and were you ever thinking of coming back and all. And I was telling him I wasn't really sure back then, but I was definitely going to try lighting the fire on you. Well, now we're at the point where Travis is on his way back Saturday, uh, We'll, we'll see if it uh, if the, the whole thing begins. But uh, what about you and Ryan having a match? What would you think of that? I mean, I, I think that I am Ryan Espy's daddy. I mean, yeah, Ryan Espy is like Eric Raphael. The day that I took over left-handed arm wrestling, I was 22 years old, and – for the next 25 years, 75% of the time, the second place competitor at every major event was one of three people, Ryan Espy, Eric Raphael, and Christian Benny. And those three guys, out of those three guys, Eric Raphael did the best against me but I feel like Ryan Espy was the best arm wrestler when I wasn't around, meaning he accomplished the world championships. Um, I'm not sure Eric won any more world titles after I started getting really good, but Ryan would hit the spots that I wasn't at and he would win. And then the last couple of years, 14, 15 and 16, it's Ryan Espy that's in the, second place in the WAL, which, you know, paid $10,000 the first two years just for second place. So we do know that the competition was deep. And uh, so 
He's probably the second best tournament arm wrestler in North American history, left-handed. Um, probably the fourth best if you throw in the new arm wrestling in the one-on-one -on -one format. I believe Eric Warfel probably has is a little bit more glorified than Ryan Espy, but Ryan Espy is he's above Devin Larratt when it comes to competition in North America. Now, how come Devin Laird and Mike and, and, and Ryan Espy have never arm wrestled is beyond the, the, I can't explain that to you without calling them both pussies. Um, so <laughs> I don't want to do that because I like both of those guys.